Okay, in this lesson here, what we're going to do is show you how you can use physics volumes to create water. Okay, now the first thing, we're actually going to start out with a fluid surface info actor, so that we actually get the, the visual um, part of the water as well, not just the volume. So what I want to do, since I want, let's take the, uh, this open area here and fill this, uh, this one with water first. Okay. So I'm going to start with the actor class browser, go under info, and inside of info let's grab a fluid surface info. Right click somewhere along the wall and add the fluid surface info into the level. So we've got some default stuff set up on it. Basically, a fluid surface info is just a highly tessellated plane. And uh, once you're in the game or you hit a real-time preview, it'll start to actually move the vertices around a little bit. So the water will have a default ripple. Now, we don't want it to be this wide. Otherwise, it's going to be getting in the way of our other uh, pools that we're going to set up for other um, interesting effects. So what I want to do is double-click the fluid surface info and change some of its properties. First, under Fluid Surface Info, we have Fluid X Size and Fluid Y Size. Let's up X Size just a little bit to about 50, and then bring Y Size down to 15. Now we have a much narrower uh, water surface. So I can drag that over and line it up roughly with the first pool. I'm going to let the edges go ahead and go through the geometry just so that when it ripples, we don't see the, uh, the effect through the geometry. We don't see the end of this Fluid Surface Right, that would look bad. And we have this much space in between, so it's not going inter to interfere with the other pools. So with that now, let me go in the front view and align it about to the, uh, the height I want. So notice that it's really hard to see in the front view. I mean, we can look at the position of the actor, but here's a quick trick. If you activate real-time preview, the water actually starts to ripple. Now, I can go ahead and turn that back off, but with a slight variation in the geometry, I can tell exactly where it is. I'm also going to switch my grid to 16 so I can align it to about, I want to try to get it about 64 units below, so something about that, maybe four grid um, squares down. So we kind of deep, but we'll be able to swim out of it. So with that in place now, one last thing, of course, we want to change to some uh, texture or material. Something that looks, looks like water. more like water. <coughs> Another key thing I want to do is notice that even in the perspective view, if I activate real-time preview, you have to get right up on the surface to tell that there's any movement. From a distance, I mean, it'd be, it might be hard to tell that that's even moving. Right. So what I want to do is make sure I get a material that has a cube map. That'll make the movement much more apparent. So I'll open the, uh, the texture browser and go under AW Global. Now, I've got a, a filter set. So if you were to just open up the browser by itself, you wouldn't necessarily have all these textures loaded in by default. You might have to select AW Global and say load entire package. Then you would get everything. Once you hit all, that's uh, too many textures to just look through one by one. So you can set a filter. Start typing ocean glass because that's the, uh, the shader I wanted. So with that selected now, I can go back to the Fluid Surface Info's properties. Under Display, I can expand Skins, and I can add an element to the Skins Array. So if I expand that now, I have, let me refresh the uh, list real quick. So now I have uh, uh, one element for the uh, Skins, and I can say Use. So now its first skin is using that ocean glass. And notice the, uh, okay. the ripple effect now because of the cube map. So we've got our visual reference set up for water. We can tell, okay, now from outside the water, yes, that does look a lot more like water. Of course, right now, go ahead and run into the, uh, to the game and jump into it. And let's see exactly what happens. Because just right. by adding the fluid surface does not mean you have water. It just looks like you have water. See? Right. Hey, look at your pool. I'm going to dive in. <laughs> Splat. <laughs> okay. Concrete. Now you're going to have a hard time getting out. <laughs> So if this wasn't a capture the flag map with the translocator, you'd be pretty much stuck in here. So now, mm -hmm. since, I mean, we want the actual volume effect, well, hmm, physics volume. There you go. As a matter of fact, let me take a look at some of the other volumes now. We've been working with blocking volume, regular volume, and physics volume. They have a water volume. Actually, a water volume is pretty much the same thing as a physics volume. You don't get any new properties. What it is, though, is it's a separate actor that just has some things already set the into default it. Default properties already established. So if we start out with water volume, of course, I want to move the builder brush around this area first. Don't want to accidentally build one off the side and have to sit around and resize it. So let me set my builder brush up, maybe a height of about 960, so I'm just about 64 off of 1024 on the height. Set the width up to maybe, let me see which way my width is looking, 256. Yep, that should line up. And the breadth 1024 should be good. Now, let me go and move this over. Now, here's one thing about working with fluid surface infos. See how it could be kind of hard to tell exactly where I'm lining this up unless I zoomed way in? I could always right-click on the gray bar, go to View, and say, do I want to view fluid surface infos? No. So just for the time being, I can line this up. And, of course, this view is uh, still showing fluid surface infos, which helps for lining up the top. 
Of course, I planned out the 64 units, so that way a 960 no, tall cube... No, you didn't just calculate that in your head, Yeah, it's weird. You? This happens to me all the time. I just type in these random numbers, and all and of a sudden... And they just work. Snaps. Amazing. What's up with that? Absolutely amazing. 